And what a way to kick things off. Fans still filing in, but they are loud here in Albany, New York. They are electric. Any home state advantage that Brian Myers had is gone. It's all for Dirty Dango now. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we're, we're, we're a couple stones away from NYC. But the Albany crowd here, yeah, does not care. They are all about Dirty Dango. A lot of great matchups still to come tonight on the live pay-per-view of Bound for Glory, of course, live on pay-per-view and Fight TV come 8 p.m. Eastern. Matchups like Mike Bailey defending his X Division Championship against AEW's Frankie Kazarian. That is a first-time ever matchup. Also, we'll see Mickey James. She's continuing her quest towards the Knockouts World Championship. However, if Mia Yim beats Mickey James, James has vowed to retire. Also in the Knockouts Division, Vexed will defend their knockouts world tag team titles against the death dolls ty valkyrie and jessica also the call your shot gauntlet match will go down 20 competitors both male and female will compete the winner gets to call their shot for any title at any time meanwhile the kingdom will defend their impact world tag team titles against the motor city machine guns and yet another first time ever matchup and later on in the evening, Jordan Grace will be defending her Knockouts World Championship against the undefeated this year, Masha Slamovich. Can't wait for that. And then, of course, our main event, the walking weapon, Josh Alexander defends his Impact World title against the leader of Honor No More, Eddie Edwards. That's still to come on Bat for Glory. And we're kicking it off now with the Digital Media Championship. Could get into a pinning situation here. But Dango fights it off. Oh, leg drop into the cover to win the digital media title. And a kick out, and Myers rolls out of the ring. And of course, Bound for Glory is being seen around the world. Our biggest event of the year, the 18th annual Bound for Glory event. And with that, we want to drop in on our French commentary team. That's Marc Blondy and Handsome JF. Et là, il profite. Oh. Attention, il est prêt pour nous. Voilà. Oh. Ça, là, c'est un poteau en acier, ça. Acier, trempé, galvanisé, noir. Alors, c'est à surveiller parce qu'on l'a à côté de nous autres. Oui, Marc Lourdain, Anson GF, ça sera une soirée. Comment? Une soirée incroyable. Exactement. Tout comme le match de Brian Myers contre Dirty Dango en ce moment. Ah oui, ah oui, l'action est là. Myers qui revient. J'ai failli te voler ton incroyable. Ben oui. Oh! Oh Dieu! Back inside the ring. Dirty Dango in a little bit of trouble here. Brian Myers all over him in defense of his digital media championship. How's your French nowadays? Uh, comme si, comme ça. Yeah, not good. There's a snap there, and Brian Myers trying to corral Dirty Dango. Brian Myers, 98 days as the digital media champion. It's the second longest digital media championship reign in Impact Wrestling's history. He captured it at the countdown to Against All Odds this past summer in Atlanta. And what a champion he's been leading this entire roster by example, being the most professional wrestler. In firm control now after an early salvo from Dango, who really has really turned the electricity up to kick off our night here at Bound for Glory. But it is all Brian Myers right now. There's a cover, hook to the leg, and a kick out. Of course, still to come here on the countdown to Bound for Glory. We will induct Raven into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. It's been a tradition ever since 2012. And Raven takes his place in immortality in just a matter of minutes here on the countdown to Bound for Glory. Well earned spot indeed from one of Pro Wrestling's legends of the ring. Right now, these two fight to become the next champion of this ring. Now, Myers once again, oh, was trying to take Dango off his feet yet again. Oh, went to the uh, real well once too often, as oh. they say. And Dango takes. Pearl advantage. 
A little over 22 minutes until Bound for Glory goes live on pay-per-view and Fight TV at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're right here in Albany, New York, and the crowd is already feeling it. Into the ring. Oh, inverted atomic drop there by Dirty Dango. Southpaw attack here. You're coming, following it up now, starting to build up a full head of steam here is Dango. Who, hey, you gotta give a lot of credit to Brian Myers here, though, for even offering this. He was willing to take on anybody. No prep time, no nothing. And he's been hanging in here with Dango like this. Side rush and leg sweep there by Dango. Trying to capture the championship. Oh, Falcon Arrow to win the title here. Cover, oh, and a kick out. And to take a little bit more than that to put down the most professional wrestler this championship. He's brought it back to a huge relevancy here. Oh! oh! And Taguri there by Myers went for a super kick. Instead, he doubles over. Dang on the implant DDT! Could be! Hold on to the championship and a kick out. Every Impact Championship will be defended tonight at Bound for Glory. All six on the line this evening here in Albany. This could really set the tone for the evening if Dirty Dango were to walk out with the digital media title. Yeah, what a way to walk into Impact Wrestling, win a championship on the biggest night oh. of the year. That's a way to stick a claim. Myers was thinking about the roster cut. Tornado oh. DDT! Dango, cover to win the title! Kick out by Myers! He thought that was almost going to be it. Take a look at how close this was. The Tornado DDT, so close, but somehow Myers gets uh -oh. the shoulder up. And look at this. Dango went to the top rope. You know he loves the leg drop from up there. Myers escaped, but only for a minute. Dango following right up behind. Looking for it again. Is now, is that enough to put Myers down? Going for the leg drop off the top. Calls it down and dirty. Oh, and a spear by Myers. Great timing there from Myers and following up with the roster cut. Cover. Myers turns away Dango. Here is your winner and still Impact Wrestling Digital Media Champion, Ryan Myers. Dango had him there for a moment, but Myers shut the door. He really flipped the switch there at the end. 100 percent but regardless what an electric way to kick off the night on the countdown to bound for glory take a look one more time as the roster cut connects with dango to put this contest away and keep the title around the waist of brian myers well as i mentioned moments ago tonight we will induct one of pro wrestling's most prolific champions and sadistic minds into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame right here on the countdown to Bound for Glory. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no other mortal dare to dream before. Some of you may call me mad, twisted, tortured, an evil genius, perhaps insane. But who are you people to judge me? When I hear the name Raven, I think of my worst enemy. There's a fine line between genius and insanity, and Raven, I think, is that fine line. A lot of people don't know Raven's IQ is Menza level, and he's a brilliant. He really is. But at times, he would also tell you he's brilliant. Raven loves and cares for this business like no other person I've ever met. Innovative, creative, divergent, a psychological genius, a genuine outlier and misfit. Raven's approach to professional wrestling was, if anyone's ever done it that way, I'm not sure that I want to do it. He is thinking on a higher level than anybody else in this business. Raven had this innate ability to reinvent himself all the time, keeping himself fresh forever. He did that, especially here at Impact Wrestling. I think he was unselfish in trying to establish other talent, not only to create what he saw as something that was going to be really great for the wrestling business, but also great for them. I think of gratitude for a man who saw something in a young Alexis III and specifically chose me to be part of the gathering, which launched my entire career. Luke Skywalker had Darth Vader. Batman had the Joker. Tommy Dreamer had Raven. 
And without Raven, there'd be no Tommy Dreamer. What the hell? That's Raven! He's got the belt! He's taking the belt! He's got the belt! If Raven didn't come to TNA Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, when he did, I'm not sure we'd be standing here today. He infused life into this company when it was most needed. And that's part of the greatness of Raven. He inspired this entire locker room. I don't think you have somebody like Abyss who went on to be one of the biggest figures in Impact Wrestling history without somebody like Raven working with him. People were drawn to him without even knowing why they were drawn to him. And Raven, coming to TNA Wrestling, coming to Impact Wrestling, was really one of the guys that made people look around and go, OK, I think that's worth following. Raven is everything I loved about professional wrestling. It was dark. It was gritty. It was professional wrestling of today before it was today. He is everything that embodies what a professional wrestler should be, whatever a Hall of Famer should be. A genius mind that drove so much forward should always be acknowledged, and that's absolutely what he did. I just want to say congratulations to you, Raven, for everything you've accomplished in this business. Thank you for everything you have taught me and helped me along the way. Raven, from the bottom of my heart, I can't think of a better person to be inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Congratulations, and you deserve it more than just damn near everybody. We were complete opposites, but somehow got along, and congratulations, this is very deserved, and it drives me insane that I have to put you over, but congratulations. You brought me to the next level during our feud in 2003, and you left an indelible mark on my career, just like I left an indelible mark on your head when I scalped you on live TV. Thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for everything you've done for Impact Wrestling. And there's nobody more deserving of this honor than Raven. So welcome to the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Walk the Raven, never more. ago, Scott Demore came up to me and he said, Tommy, I got to talk to you about the Hall of Fame. And at that moment, my heart stopped. Everything seemed to freeze. And he said, we all voted and we know it should be you. And I got to tell you, my entire career flashed in front of my eyes. I said, man, my family's here. My mom's still alive. She's going to be able to see this honor. I can't believe this is happening to me. And like when someone gets on a knee and proposes, I jumped up in Scott's arms and I said, yes, Scott, yes. Thank you so much, I can't believe it. And he said, Tommy, we all voted that it was you to induct Raven into the Hall of Fame. And even when he cannot wrestle, I'm still doing the job for Raven. I've known Raven since summer camp. And when we all talk about reinventing ourselves, Raven reinvented himself before it was cool. In the 1990s, Raven burst upon the scene. He was grunge. He was counterculture. He was the anti-hero. He was everything that that generation was all about. And I'm gonna tell you something, because I could talk about all the titles, I could talk about all the accomplishments, but I'm gonna tell you something about Raven that a lot of you may not know. Raven is a legit genius. He has a Mensa IQ. Just ask him, he will tell you. <laughs> but Raven did something that a lot of people back then did not do. Raven believed in people. He believed in the underdog. And he went out each and every week and did it with his body and his blood. And without Raven, yes, there'd be no Tommy Dreamer, but there would be no Stevie Richards, the blue meanie, Nova. There would be no Beulah McGillicuddy, 
Francine and Kimona. There would be no Dudley boys. He gave opportunity to CM Punk, and there would be no Mickey James without Raven believing in people. As we get older, we get more reflective. I got to tell you, when I come out here, you all make me feel so much younger, so much thinner. <laughs> but when you're older, you also realize that we work for moments, and you give us those moments. And what I wouldn't do to experience one more moment with Raven, because when I would get DDT'd and I'd look up and I'd wipe the blood out of my eyes and he would hit his pose, I never realized I was in a moment and a moment of greatness that I can never have again. For that, because I know he never appreciated it either. So for everyone here and everyone at home, thank you for giving us those moments. And please shower the greatness of raving. And it is my honor to induct the latest entrant in the 2022 Impact Wrestling's Hall of Fame, Raven! honor. People who know me know I can be a smart ass, egotistical, loud, basically a dick. Uh, it comes from having narcissistic and histrionic personality disorder, as well as being severely ADD and self-destructive. Not qualities that are great for succeeding in life, but qualities that are fantastic in a professional wrestler. I had a void in me that I foolishly felt would be fulfilled by the adulation of perfect strangers, but I soon found out not only did it not fulfill the void, but that the cheers somehow felt false. The booze, however, made me feel like I was back in the womb. The cheers, um, on some level, I guess I felt I didn't deserve the cheers, but the booze felt like I was at home. It's joy to my soul. I started in Memphis, then Florida Championship Wrestling, then Vancouver and Portland, before moving on to the national companies or worldwide companies. Um, but I was lucky enough to be the last guy to go through the territory system um, and, uh, and then be a factor, a featured player in the modern era. Being in the, uh, being in the territory system, I learned so much so fast that I was able to, tri to quickly become a successful individual on the national stage. But I couldn't have got there without the grappler, Lynn Denton. He was the booker in Portland, and because I was the green kid, I had to drive him to all the shows. Um, I say had to, but what I really mean is I was blessed to, because I got to pick his brain. I got to pick the brain of a true booking wizard. And it was like, he wouldn't just out and out teach you. He, uh, he made you ask the right questions. But if you ask the right questions, like for example, like uh, I go, uh, hey, uh, listen, I've been doing this for a while now. I've always wanted to do it. I want to be in a cage match. Instead of saying yes or no, he said, he goes, well, OK, but what are you going to do the week before to build to it? And uh, I go, I don't know. And he goes, uh, come back tomorrow and let me know. Let me know what you think of. So I thought of it. I thought about it. Came back. He goes, all right. He goes, what are you going to do the week before that? I go, I don't know. <laughs> and he taught me to, to how to think serially, how to think, how to book serially. And, you know, he was teaching me how to book at only two years in the business. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. He'll never know how much he meant to my career 
Um, no matter how many times I've tried to tell him, I don't think he realizes how much of an influence he was. Ignore the tremor in my hand. I have a shoulder disorder. Um, and I may be a little nervous. Because you guys are cheering me. How about a few boos, though, to make me feel comfortable? Thank you. Um, another huge influence, equally uh, influential in my career, is Paul Heyman. By the time I got to ECW, my career had grown by leaps and bounds, and creatively, Paulie allowed me to do whatever I wanted. Just about, you know, unless he, uh, unless it was just, you know, he even let me crucify a Sandman. <laughs> so he let me do what I wanted. He made me go apologize, but you know, times are tough. Um, but I'll tell you what, the stuff I did there, the feud I had with Dreamer and the feud I had with Sandman, I'll put up against any feuds in the history of the business and I guarantee they stack up. I would have stayed there forever, but money was offered, and more money was offered, so I went to WCW. Um, that was a really good move, except, well, my self-destructiveness and my ego got in the way, and suffice to say, um, I quit the company prematurely. So the less said, the better. After that, I got, after that, I got clean and sober and finally went to WWE. Unfortunately, that was a miserable experience. <laughs> but it had one positive, a huge one. I finally started seeing a psychiatrist to deal with my personality disorders and my ego. Egotism is a, manif is a manifestation of insecurity. <laughs> and I'd always been massively insecure. Since then, I've done a lot of work and hopefully I'm a better person today. After WWE let me go, I thought, what a lousy cap to my television career. But then TNA came a-calling. I got another half a dozen years plus out of telling on my TV career and for the most part, that was used like I felt I was deserved. I hated the three and a half hour drive to Nashville, but for the most part, I was happy there. Um, from there, my life comes full circle, and I'm here I am back in for the Hall of Fame. Oops, lose my notes. Um, I'm back at the Hall of Fame for Impact, because let's face it, Memphis, first it was Memphis rest, Championship Wrestling, then it was TNA, and then it became Impact. So everything's come full circle. I'm back where I started. It's like the Hotel California. You can check out, but you can't ever leave. <laughs> there are so many people I want to thank, like Sandman, Lodi, Saturn, but there's not enough time. And my true friends, they know how much they mean to me. They all do. However, there is one person I want to single out, and that's Tommy. I want to thank Tommy for inducting me. I want to thank him for being the yin to my yang. I want to thank him for being the baby face to my heel. And I especially want to thank him for being my partner in a 28-year feud that finally ends tonight. Thank you. Quote the Raven, nevermore. <laughs> oh my God. This is one of the best induction speeches I've ever seen because Tommy Dreamer eats an even flow DDT one more time. I'm 88.
No offense, Tommy. I, you deserve it for wearing a suit on TV. You know that's not you, but oh my God, what an incredible honor having Raven officially in the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yes, once again, congratulations to Raven, a member of the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. We are minutes away from Bound for Glory live on pay-per-view and Fight TV at 8 p.m. Eastern at the top of the hour. We've got some huge matchups. And it all kicks off with X Division action as Feedball Mike Bailey defends the championship against AEW and former X Division champion Frankie Kazarian. Meanwhile, Mickey James puts her legendary career on the line against Mia Yim. If Mia Yim wins, Mickey James must retire. And Vex defends the Knockouts World Tag Team titles against the Death Dolls. Also, the Call Your Shot gauntlet is back. 20 competitors, the winner gets to call their shot for any title at any time. And the Kingdom's Matt Taven and Mike Bennett defend the Impact World Tag Team titles against the Motor City Machine Guns. Also, the juggernaut Jordan Grace defends her Knockouts World Championship against the unstoppable Masha Slamovich. And in the main event, the walking weapon Josh Alexander defends the Impact World title against the leader of Honor No More, Eddie Edwards. This is indeed our biggest event of the year. We have got such a great crowd here tonight. Albany, New York, are you oh, ready? Baby. The Washington Avenue Armory is loaded. We are ready to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Bound for Glory begins live on pay-per-view and Fight TV here at the top of the hour. Don't go anywhere because Bound for Glory starts now.